So look, <laughs> you know, when you make a sash, you're not supposed to be able to do this with your pinky, but I can, so I'm gonna fix that. Um, and all I'm gonna do is just create a little Dutchman here um, to, to fix it. Um, I got some scrap here that maybe I'll use. I'm gonna paint it anyway, so whatever. almost lines up too. Perfect. So what do you do, Mr. Quillian, in a situation like this? Oh, uh, well... See, that covers it pretty good. I got a brand new sharp blade in here. Okay, I'm just gonna take this piece of wood here. I'm gonna score around the edges of this guy. Okay. Look at that. On this side. And then here. And then, my, my lines right there, I'm just gonna deepen them a little, okay? My sharp knife. There you go. Okay, I'm just defining the edges. Okay. And the reason I'm using my knife it's because I can cut, you know, I can see the border that way, see that? I'm cutting to the inside, brand new blade, see how I do that? Do here. That. Now, the other side. Okay. So then, you know, I don't mind. My piece is going to fit there. So look, I got a brand new router the other day. And we're going to put it on its maiden voyage here. Kevin is so kind. And he chucked up. Chucked up. That's up chuck and chucked. Oh, it's not the same thing. Chucked up means he put the, uh, the router bit in there. Okay. And it's pretty interesting. That's. I wonder if, does this thing come off? I wonder, look. Oh, it does, good. Full so door. I want a place for it to eject. Okay, so I don't have a lot of experience with this router, but fundamentally all routers are the same. I want to set the depth of this here. Okay, um, a little bit deeper. See, it's not all the way deep. Okay, but that's, that'll be good enough. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the router on and gently route in there to create a consistently flat surface to put down on, then I'll chisel around the rest. This tool here can be considered an auto depth -a -mater. Get it? See? Auto depth -a -mater. I should turn my head on backwards for this operation because if you're going to use an auto depth -a -mater, you definitely want to have your head on backwards. So, you think Darth Vader uses one of those? An auto depth -a -mater? 
Yeah, he doesn't call it that. He calls it something else. But he uses the force, you know, and he does it. I don't have. I'm not that far along in my mastery mm. of such tactics, so I'm, I'm forced to use this. I see, Luke. All that did was create a consistent depth. Right? And now, if I have a sharp chisel, which I hopefully do, I can then carve the rest of it out. Uh, notice, here, I'm gonna, yeah, see, I'm, I'm gonna put it flat against this table, and I'm intentionally using my horse here because the force will then transfer into the ground. I don't want anything bouncy, so. What's that? Force. Yeah. Force. Okay. I'm going to carve the rest of this out. No big deal. I mean, I need an opportunity to do a Dutchman anyway, because if you're going to make a mistake, gosh, this is like, I made several mistakes today. I cut my meeting, I cut my, my Munson wrong, I had to redo that. I cut a hole in my, what do you call it, this thing here. Um, the style, blew out the side because I was happy and listening to some heavy metal music and you know so let's clean all this stuff out let's see if my piece fits chisel is not as sharp as it could be but it is getting the job done okay there we go it's not very often that you can stick your finger up and then, oh, now I need to know the orientation. Flick a piece off. Yeah. All right. So, I'm just gonna blow all the debris out. Do some yellow glue action in there. Okay, and then use the best glue spreader I know of. Again, Kevin says his phone doesn't ring unless we're filming and it's crazy you know that it's true <laughs> it's true <laughs> you know so trying to you know get some cool video footage out there all right on the edges here It's not hard. I mean, this is this is fun stuff. Man, my, one of my favorite Dutchmans ever is when I, I was at George Strait's house, and I was.
was installing a pair of walnut French doors to the back porch of this house. And I put my hinge mortising jig on the wrong side of the line. It was all stained grain material. And I had to put a Dutchman in. You know, right? I mean, this is pretty cool. I mean, the, the grain even kind of lines up on this. But on the, on the, on the George, George Strait house... I mean, I had to like match the grain pattern, I had to match the color, and all this kind of stuff. All right, so there you go. That's kind of how it works like this. And so now I'm gonna take my little block plane here and let's see if I can start to. Oh yeah. Still feel it's a little high. A little high. I don't want to risk anymore. I'm gonna find a sanding block. You can wrap around the other scrap piece. What's that? You can wrap it around that other scrap piece of wood that you cut it from. Mm. Just to make a flat block for the moment. For the moment. Oh, this guy here? Yeah. Alright. Gives you a flat reference. I think that you know, once you just kind of go over and do the detail, let the glue set because I got a little fuzz right there. You got a close up of that? Oh, yeah. Man, see? Anyway, that looks really good. So, I'm almost glad for the opportunity to screw that up. Thanks, Steve.